Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, 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 Steve Ranazizi. I'm the guy. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is What's the Odds with Steve Renazizi. I'm your host. I'm joined, as always, Brenton Lucas, here to talk about what the hell happened in the world, but more specifically, probably just like a few sports that we love to talk about. Uh, opening day yesterday, we've got some March Madness happening. We have some uh, golf action. Brenton, I'm sure you're into some sort of uh betting uh like organization that's getting ready for you know pre-draft rituals and also you know whatever you guys got to do in april before your the draft, the draft is soon it's right? very the very close soon. yes so once the draft happens and free agency ends is that when you start to lock in your with, with you and your band of brothers start to get together and you start to f- conceive of this guy with this scheme and this thing and that thing that's like for it's... example, okay. For example, the 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 Chiefs uh, signed a rugby player. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this. Yeah, he and looks so like he looks like a people, big brute. People have tried this before, right? Mm-hmm. People have tried this sort of you know rugby guy comes in. Is he a running back? Is he a receiver? But when you got Andy Reid, and you also have uh, you know. Travis Kelsey, who has been public in his in his love of the Statue of Liberty play, you know, where he runs and then all of a sudden throws it back. And he's even done it successfully to what we thought was a game winning touchdown, you know. And then obviously we know what happened with Darius Tony and blah, blah, blah. Don't but line up both sides. For you guys. Don't line up both sides. I understand. Not our fault. But the point is that if you told this guy, you know, hey, Buddy, run, run with Travis parallel to him. You know, he's very, uh, uh, you know, fluid in being able to just, that's all they do. It's, it's the, it's the statue of Liberty play. So that could be a situation where, you know, this guy could be a complete unknown, but you never know. Yeah, I get it. Um, It's to be determined because, you know, now you're, you're assuming that the talent level in this professional rugby team and in this league is as good as the NFL as far as the speed, the size, and all of that, this is a guy who's running through guys who look skinnier than him without pads on, and now he'll be going up against guys who are just as fast that are also 100 pounds heavier. So, I mean, there's a reason why the option play doesn't really work at the professional level. And, look, it could be a good signing for them. They obviously want to add weapons because they didn't have very many last year. But I think the Hollywood Brown acquisition is still more valuable than, than this guy. Oh, very much so. He's, but he's gonna I have just to learn a whole new game. It's a whole new speed. It's, it's an interesting fun to see. signing. But he could it's be fun. he could be just a camp body that ends up uh not even making the team. Very very well could be, but I just think that it's a kind of an interesting thing that you get Andy Reid, who is, you know, out of all these offensive geniuses you got out there now, the Sean McVeighs and the and the Shanahan's and stuff. These are all second generation of guys that Andy Reid coached with their dads. Yeah. And he still is the one that's sort of the offensive kind of, you know, savant in a way. Still, 25 plus years into his career, he's still the guy that, you know, could come up with a wrinkle. Uh, Speaking of which wrinkles, uh, my oldest, Mr. P.R. Jackson, which, by the way, we did our own little personal record yesterday. He put up 168. Or 70, 70, but he goes, can you spot me? I'm like, spot you? How about this? How about I go first with no warm up whatsoever? <laughs> How's your like, back? Oh. I killed it, dude. <laughs> I put three up with, with ease. I mean, the last one was not with ease, but the first two were, were relative ease. That's why they call and him then shaky he went, Steve. So yeah, 170 <laughs> up on the PR. But anyway, him and I were talking about the, uh, he was saying, he's like, oh, I bet you like a lot of CFL players and XFL players get signed to teams now because of the new kickoff rules. 
And I, I, I thought about it, and he's, you know, I just feel like the guys in the NFL understand, no, they, they know how to block and tackle and read. And but I feel like the biggest thing of change is going to be if you're a special teams coordinator, because now you have to learn an entire new, yeah, way about, you know, it's going to be a scheme thing. It'll be, a, it's like a new game where all of a sudden, like game like seven or eight, you'll see a team that figured out a way, like if we kick it to the left side or all the time, like it'll be a thing where someone will figure out a way, a la the tush push in a way of like, this can't be like, this is a check. Someone will figure out a way to do something special with this until they figure out how to stop it and so on and so forth. But it's mm -hmm. almost a new, completely new thing for coordinators to have to get down with. You know, I mean, imagine like all of a sudden they told you, Oh, that you can't run the ball. The quarterback can't run the ball past the line of scrimmage anymore. That's the new thing for for the for the safety of the quarterback. They don't go behind the line. Of, they can't go at, like you as an offensive coordinator. It'd be it would be completely humongous to your job to come up with all the new ideas of how to you know. So that's what I think. Like the 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 special teams guys out there right now are going to have to figure out how do I scheme for and or against what can happen here. Because it is, it's, I mean, I, I feel like it is an advantage now. From what I gather, I, don't, I haven't read the rule completely, but is are they moving the kicker back? Uh, I don't know if they're moving the kicker back, but they're, I, I think maybe they are, just so the ball will not go into the end zone, but they're moving everybody up. So yeah. they're only 10 yards of separation, but it's like 20 yards from where the guy is going to hypothetically catch the ball. So you're basically going to see a return on almost every kick but they're not going to be coming 40 yards down the field at full speed, hitting each other. It's just going to okay. be 10 yards to collision. So you're saying, so even if now, because it used to be, if you kicked it to the back of the end zone, right? Because it seemed like anyone could, any kicker now in the NFL could kick it out of the end zone yeah. whenever they really feel like it, right? So if, you, if you're a receiver now, and normally if it was kicked to the back of the end zone, but still in, Right, you would just either let it go out of the back or just catch it and take a knee. Knee. Now you're saying they might consider running it out even from a place like that because the lines are so close together it's and there might be bigger. Gonna holes? look really bizarre the first few times you see it. It'd be like if the Giants were kicking off, everybody but the kicker is going to be on the opponent's like 30 yard line. Yeah, and the kicker's going to be 40 yards behind everybody. But I'm saying, my question is, do you think it'll be harder? Yeah, because it's, it? it's a live ball, so they're probably going to have to play it a lot more than they they have been. They're not really going to just let it go. Okay. Because there there are going to be probably situations where it takes a weird bounce, and if you didn't go after it, now it's uh, it's a free ball. Am I reading it right that kickers and returners are the only ones that can move until the bar, ball is touched by the by the return? Yeah. By the returner. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so everybody else is still five, seven Just, yards uh, apart. Yeah, go back and watch like some XFL games and and get a feel for it, uh, so it isn't so shocking when you see the, you know. Now, is this injury prevention? Is this yes. under the category it's, of more action for kickoffs? It's, it's and more action back? for kickoffs because I, what was the number? It was it was over eighty percent of the uh, kickoffs last year were touchbacks, so they want to eliminate that and get us more action, but then also. Again, when you're only 10 yards apart, you can still hit a guy, but you're not going to have the momentum of when you're running from the other side of the field all the way down at full Got speed. It. All right. And so the kickoff guy is essentially back in the game now. Yeah. If you're a, if you're a Devin Hester wannabe when you're growing up, you had Devin Hester on the wall, and now you're an elite kickoff return person, you now have a position on a team. Huh? Correct. As, as soon as the rule changed, the Steelers went and gave Cordero Patterson a two-year deal. So they're serious so, about yeah. their, their kickoff returns. All right. Well, that's cool. I, still, but... I mean, I guess it's like what they did with the uh, extra point a couple of years ago. You know, they yeah. moved it back yeah, and yeah. made it a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mostly because I thought J.J. Watt was blocking half of them to begin with. So they were like, this sucks. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I, and what's a hip tackle. It's when you tackle someone from their hip. Yeah. You I grab them at the hip and you, you pull them down and it's, uh, it, yeah. it leads to a lot of injuries. So, so PR told me, PR was explained to me. He's like, so if you're running side by side with someone, you just can't leap onto their 
hips, wrap yourself around their hips, and then just drag them to the ground anymore. Yeah. So I said, so what do you do if you're running side by side? Just kind go, of go for their legs. Go for their legs. Gotta you go just got to go. I mean, that's the proper way to an tackle ankle. anyway. That's the proper way to tackle is you go for the legs and you wrap up. Now, isn't that what ended Bo Jackson's career? Yeah, probably. But what are we going to yeah. do? It's eventually going to be two hand touch and. And then so if B. John Robinson gets tackled around the ankles this year and rips his own uh, hip out of his socket, <laughs> right? And, you know, sort of... Not a penalty. Not a penalty anymore. Not a penalty. Not a penalty. Okay. All right. I got it. I but thought the hip tackle that, was like... Don't put that out in the world. I want to see Bijan actually get to be a running back this year. Doesn't this make more sense if you're hearing hip tackle of like... You know the tackle like word in like... Uh, Gronk or or Kelsey gets like the ball over the middle, and then the 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 guy just comes in and right and just levels him right up, like right at the hip and just flips him upside down. Like I mm -hmm. thought that was a hip. Doesn't that make a that sounds like a hip tackle? That's legal. That sounds very dangerous too. Like you could <laughs> pop my hip out of my fucking socket. Yeah, but, but that's that's still legal. I mean, football's a tough sport, but this feels I don't know what. So this was I guess this is the injury that got Mark. Mark Andrews, Andrews yeah. and uh, someone uh, and, else and Tyreek in that uh, – what was that game? It was covered on Hard Knocks where he kept going in and out. Was that Tennessee? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy grabbed – He got, he got tackled at the sideline, and then he was in and out of the game. And that was him coming back from, like, a, another injury. But those those hip tackles, they are pretty Who brutal. wants to play defense anymore? But, My God. Well, at the Who same time, it's defense? like instead of – outline the hip tackle why don't we just replace the uh, turf with grass and then those same injuries will probably go way down there's a big fucking stink going around new york I'm, i don't think it's national because it wouldn't make any sense but there there is there's a group of people organization or whatever that's like we will put the money it's only like 25 million dollars yeah to add a, a roof to metlife stadium and they were like it would be so beneficial and then get real grass in there <clears throat> and you can just do it. You know, you could, it would be really, and for some reason, and I think it's because I don't know. And it could be retractable. I don't know if it's the world cup. Like it's, it, there's more and more movement towards, towards getting real grass. I bet you, cause MetLife in particular, people have said as, you know, terrible grass and terrible turf. I mean, terrible turf right now. And, they, and they're going to host whatever finals are, there, are in the World Cup. And I know that has to be played on grass. It cannot be played on turf. Yeah. So they will bring in grass for that. So I think because of that, they're like, why aren't we fucking getting the grass now for the guys that we watch every week, our World Cup every single week? I mean – And it makes sense. I think that's more, yeah. more of the – I think it's almost like when – when uh, Vegas got the Golden Knights and all of a sudden Jersey's like, wait, you told us we couldn't have gambling for years because we had a professional hockey team. And now you're telling us they can have a hockey team and it was like, and that's how the floodgates got open for that. I'm almost feeling like this is what's going on with grass push for, because it, I mean. They've run the yeah, numbers. It's, it's better for know. the players. It's way better for the players. And the majority of them like playing on grass. I, if you, you, you would have, have the money, if I got to pay, you have a big blowback. Six ninety nine to watch a fucking game on Peacock. You can pay the twenty five million that you've already made easily to put grass in your stadium. And I hope the Bills put grass in the new stadium. Yeah, it's so funny because our high school is now, after this season, putting in turf infields in the softball and uh, baseball fields. It changes the game. Well, it does, but it also because we, I mean, like we got rained out. All we had a rain all day yesterday, so all athletic events got rained out. Yeah, it but sucks. could you uh, just have a better drainage system instead no, of putting dude, turf? You're in? talking about we got like fucking two inches or an inch and a half of rain yesterday. There's no quick. It was like steady rain all day. Not that you could have played in it, but you could play. You probably can't play in it today, this morning either. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like that other the the turf stuff drains real quick. But anyway. Uh, I, I did you ever it, play it, baseball on turf? No. So no. I I had to several times. Uh, there were a lot of different places growing up that that had it, and I just I don't. It's so much faster. Yeah, it definitely changes the game, and it makes it a little more difficult as an infielder to 
try to gauge where a ball's going. And and I don't know, man. I just I like grass. And if you get rained out, you get rained out. People, it's you know, nobody likes a rain out anymore. Schedules are built around people. You know, people's lives are more important than the turf that their kids are playing on. Anyway, uh, and anyway, Giant Stadium or MetLife, whatever the fuck it is, they're trying to get this done and i think it probably will get done but if you if you were a, a yankees if the yankees or the or the mets said we're going to put uh you know turf in either one of those places there would be a fucking uproar by the players they would go nuts yeah. so it makes no sense anymore um yeah so what else anything other big signings in the nfl nothing it's sort of quieted down now i know we had a lot of pro days we had a lot of that stuff yeah and we've moved uh, into the pre-draft stuff and then we'll probably see a few trades on draft day or maybe I, right up leading up to the the draft i've seen the giants projected to probably be able to get whatever wide receiver they want mm-hmm. at 6 and then Michael Penix Jr. in the second round at 45. That wouldn't be bad. You need a that wide would receiver. Not be bad. You need a wide yes. receiver. Give Daniel Jones at least a chance to keep the job since you already paid the guy. Uh-huh. Right? But he needs a weapon. Um, and and so, yeah, yeah, to that point, the Chargers who should be taking a wide receiver or Brock Bowers look like they're going to go offensive tackle, especially based on I don't know if you saw Harbaugh speaking. Uh, but they were talking he to him about work. who you're going to take in the draft. And he just went on this rant about how the one position that you, that everybody else relies on, but they don't rely on anybody is the offensive line. It all starts with the offensive line, this and that and that. And so he is all about, I building an could offensive not agree line. more. And he got Gus Edwards. So he's got some beef in the backfield and he just wants to run the ball. And Justin Herbert is going to be a footnote. But I've also seen crazy trade rumors, and they are just rumors about him trading away Justin Herbert for another first round pick and getting himself JJ because he's in love with him. And that no. would be pretty wild. I, I mean, it's a rumor, but Harbaugh's, be... Harbaugh's fucking crazy. You would have to do a lot of explaining to a lot of people. A lot of they've already invested yeah. so much money. You'd have to get a buyer on the other end. He's or also some... a proven superstar in the NFL. Yes, I think I think that's a conversation where you go. Uh, we're gonna have to learn to love Justin Herbert. Okay, you can learn to love someone else too, yeah. just the way you learn. You, JJ McCarthy wasn't always in your life, you know. You 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 learn you lived other loved other people, and you'll you know you loved Colin Kaepernick. He got you to a Super Bowl. You loved mm-hmm. him, so you'll learn to love other people. Uh, I think uh, I think that's a great. I mean, but yeah, I mean, you got. The I would Bears, love to hear the that. Bears are God, not I, taking a receiver. He's not uh, wrong. And, and then the the what the next few picks they all need the Washington Commanders are taking a quarterback, and then the Patriots are most likely taking a quarterback unless they trade back. Um, who's picking at four? The That's Cardinals. The Cardinals. So they'll take Marvin Harrison Jr. And then if maybe if, they're they're talking about what's his name? Uh, who's the LSU kid? Neighbors. Uh, like neighbors. Neighbor, yeah, being neighbors. Being over him is good. Um, so, I mean, they'll take one of those guys and then hopefully yep. for your sake, the chargers decide to go offensive tackle. And then you have your pick of whoever's left. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind it. I, I'm, I look at more like there are three top tier, there's top three, the tier one of quarterbacks are the top three tier two. You got McCarthy, Knicks and Penix jr. So it looks like McCarthy and Knicks probably will go in the top 14 picks. Right. Yeah. So it's what it, what the Giants are doing is is saying to themselves, okay, the difference between McCarthy, we love McCarthy, but we have a feeling that you, someone's going to move up. I have a feeling someone's going to try to move up and get McCarthy in the top five. That's just top my five. thought. Wow. Yes, before the Giants, I don't even think the Giants will have an opportunity to draft McCarthy. I think if they did, they would have a real hard time because I've heard they really fell in love with him. I know they love Jaden Daniels, but I think that they like McCarthy a lot too. So, but I think the writing on the wall is that they couldn't. So, if you take now, you got four quarterbacks gone, and if it's between Bo Nix and Penix Jr., they're probably saying to themselves, "There's not much of a difference." It may be in their mind of the two, right? The upside might even be a bit higher for Penix Jr. because he's a little bit younger. I know he's got injuries, but he's a little bit younger, but. You you don't have to get 
I have a feeling Bo Nix is going to go, and you don't have to go up, move around to get Penix Jr. Then, you know what I'm saying? You can yeah. go back, get him in the second round, and still get your first round piece. So we'll see. But it's what less than two weeks. We're we're the draft. Less than, yeah, it's Thursday, it's right? Good, yeah, it's uh, it's like three weeks, right? I thought it was like right. the fourteenth. Is it Masters weekend? Is it that early? I have no idea. No, it's the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth through the twenty sixth. Three weeks. Got it. Yeah. All right. I did see. Uh, bah, 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 bah. what's his name? Dable and Shane at Penix Junior's uh, workouts yesterday. Briefly, when I was sitting around watching. Um, wait, real quick. Did you guys see the NFL coaches photo from this week? You know how they do their annual yeah. like a couple guys book. skipped it, right? Um, did they did I hear someone oh, skip it? Yeah, I, I did see uh who was it? Yeah, but most of them were there. Oh, okay. At Matt Eber Eberflus McCarthy. I think I'm reading right now. But it's always fun. They always I mean, Andy Reid will never not wear a Hawaiian shirt. If he's where do they do that at the like owners he meeting? Already stand out. Yeah, yeah. Is that where they do it? The owners meeting? Yeah. But I never remember last year the Kelsey brothers. They tried to name every coach in the NFL, and I don't think Travis could name half of them. Oh, really? From that photo, yeah. I uh, I mean, this is gonna be the first one in twenty something years without Belichick. Yeah. Andy Reid's got to be the senior man of the table now, right? Oh, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pete Carroll's gone. Pete Carroll's gone. It's a whole new NFL. Belichick's gone. You got all these young guys. I know, dude. I would say, here's a fun game. How many of you are younger than me? Uh, I would say less 35%. than 35%. Less than 10 for sure. No. Uh, I would say over, I'd say half. I'd say 16. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I'm, like, I'm 46 right now. I'll be 47 in July. Not up right now. I'd say eight or nine. Raheem Morris say, is younger than me. Yeah, is Dable? He might be. I'd say I, I would say yes. Okay. Robert Sala is about your age. I would say right around me. We're all in yeah. the same boat. I think Bren's right. No, dude, I'm right. Half. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones I can name older than me are Reed. And McCarthy. McCarthy's older than me, but my, no, he might not be, dude. Hold on. Let's check. Let's check. Siri, how old is Mike McCarthy? Oh, he's 60. Ooh, he's... Yeah, he's older than me. Hey, he's been... He's been old forever. He's been old my whole life. How old is Mike Vrabel? He might be younger. Uh, Ooh, he, 48. He's 48. Okay. Fuck, we're writing the same thing. Uh, who else is on that list? But Mike Vrabel is not on that list. He didn't get a job. How old is Robert? Oh, he's not. Robert How Sala? old is Robert Sala? Come on, bitch. He's <laughs> How 45. old is Robert Sala? Be nice to 45. you, 45. Oh. He's younger than me. Okay, there's there's two. You you know all the all the Rams dudes are younger than me. Okay, there's you three. got McVay and Shanahan and uh, uh, the guy in fucking um, Mike Mike McDaniel. Mike Steve McDaniel. You got the guy in uh, Lafleur's. How old's uh, McDermott? Yeah, are... McDermott's got to be right around Steve's age. Hold on, yeah. Siri. How old is Dylan McDermott? Sean McDermott. Different. Di oh fuck. Six. Oh yeah. <laughs> How old is Sean He's McDermott? He's fifty. He's fifty He's years 50. old. All right. We're we're close, dude. Yeah. God. You're right around that age of uh, the, head coach. I should. Being I'm in my coaching. head coaching prime right now. Age. Yeah. And I'm here wasting my life with you two. Oh. Mm -hmm. We we're come still, up with good schemes we're still and good winning, plans. Man, we're still winning. If people listen to this all the time for their actual knowledge of the game, they would be well versed and be successful. And whatever, and, and even if they were going into NFL rooms talking with NFL, NFL coaches and they learned what they knew from us, people would not 
be like, who the fuck are these idiots? Just some autistic journalist going in and going, you're 47, you're 58, yeah, you're yeah. 62. Yep. And he would be right. <laughs> and he would be right. Now he's knowledgeable on that fact. Um, that's depressing that I'm about the average age of an NFL coach. So, but yeah. I mean, I'm in my prime. You're in your prime. I'm in my Amazon prime. I watched Roadhouse last week. Holy oh, shit. I heard it's terrible. It is terrible, dude. But I was so gay last Thursday. <laughs> I was in Cleveland and I came home and I, did I tell you this? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, I came home and I watched Roadie Road. I was like, I told the, the audience, I go, is it gay that I'm going home after this and I can't wait <laughs> back to my hotel to watch Roadhouse? Because like he, uh, Gyllenhaal was doing interviews and stuff and I saw a, a, thing, a thing for it and I was like, fuck, dude. Yeah, man. All right. Just like a Roadhouse was a, like a stupid, like almost comedic revenge movie. I love that. I'm like, this isn't going to take itself seriously, but it was terrible, dude. It was bad. And, you know, it was Jake Gyllenhaal was fine. People, everyone was fine. Conor McGregor was not fine. Conor McGregor, you believe, like, they got the part right where you're like, oh, he's menacing. Like, you're like, all right, this guy is a true threat. Because up until this point, Gyllenhaal just walks through everyone, you know. But now, now it's like, Oh no 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 no! This guy, this guy's a badass. So it was, uh, but he can't. He couldn't do anything more than just be like a menacing gorilla. I, I, it was like like a just like a. It was you know, and then there were some real bad cheesy lines. A couple good, you know, the fight scenes were cool and shit and stuff. But yeah, it was pretty. I guess bad. he really but, did uh, accidentally punch Jalen Hall during a take. Yeah, he was showing him like a move or whatever, and he fucking yeah. hit him in the jaw or something like that. Yeah. But you know, it was it looked like people got it wasn't like got together and kind of just shot a movie on their own. Key West looks cool as fuck, and I can't wait. I'm going there in a month. By the way, shameless plug, I'll be in Key West Comedy Club in a month. Le less than a month. Well, yeah, right around a month. April 20, let me pull up these fucking dates right now because I got to get this right. I've never been to Key West. I'm very excited. April 24, 5, 6, and 7, four nights, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Comedy Key West Comedy Club. Uh, I'm bringing the whole fucking family down it's with me. Comedy Key West Comedy Club? Key, Key West. Comedy Key West. <laughs> Comedy key. How, it's how the big, only. How big is no, the marquee? I don't, dude. Here's what I know. There's no improv down. It's the comedy club yeah, in Key West. Okay. okay. There is a, we'll get. I'll talk to somebody. We'll get an improv down there for you, dude. It's you don't need it. It's gonna be great. I love this place. I love Tom, the owner. He's a fucking. I met him at Skank Fest. He was very nice. So uh, I can't wait to get down there. Oh, by the way, the weekend before, I'm in Las Vegas at Wise Guys, the 19th and the 20th of April. Two shows each night. I haven't been to that Wise Guys in Las Vegas, but I'm looking forward to it. And then the 12th, the Friday before that, I will be at the Comedy Dojo in Morris Town, Morris Plains, New Jersey. Jersey, you know where Is you're that uh, Tripoli's room? Tripoli's room, the Comedy I hear good Dojo. Things. I hear really good Great things. Room. And then the 10th is the Wednesday before that. I'm working backwards. Most guys work forwards. I work, <laughs> I work so that the end, you know the most urgent shit. April 10th, less than two weeks away. Uh, big benefit show for the, the crew going to Cooperstown Baseball from North Shore Little League. It is myself, Ari Shafir, Mark Norman, and Joe List. The first show is sold out. The second show is almost get tickets right away because it will sell out very soon. Very, very soon. Uh, that's it for me. All right. Anyway, so yeah, I was in Cleveland and I watched uh, Roadhouse and it just sort of sucked. But I did jerk off. But no, that it was uh, it was great. Were those separate yeah. things, or you jerked off while Jill and Hall watching Roadhouse? Was... Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fight scenes were cool. The fight scenes were cool. The fight scenes were very cool. But you know, the plot, everything kind of sucked beyond that. But it looked nice too. Key West looks awesome. Can I recommend uh, a film if you like fight scenes that maybe you haven't seen? Maybe it's not on your radar. Go ahead. Why are you upset? 
I want I to enhance feel like your it's going to be. It's not. Can I ask a question it's first? It's not. It's not. Go ahead. Is it foreign? Yes. I don't want to hear it. I knew it. I knew <laughs> it was going to be. I knew it was going to be something that. I'm was sorry like, that they know how to play. Know, have you seen uh, Hong Kong? Lucas knows what I'm going to say. Lucas you knows know, what, what I'm going to say, yeah. and it's one of the greatest films ever made. Wait, Hong which one? Child, oh, oh. The Raid Redemption. Yes, I've seen the Raid. Yeah. Okay. Where he works from one floor and goes up. Yeah, that yes. movie is so badass. I know. Did they remake dude. it with Conor McGregor? He would. He'd have to be at the top. It's King Kong, dude. That's the <laughs> yeah. Raid. He's Donkey Kong. Yeah, it's Donkey Kong. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've seen the raid. I love the raid. I get hard to the raid. Thank I can you. Do that. Thank you. No, I'm the, just the saying, raid but I thought is... it was going to be like, no, I, no, I know. No, no, no. I, yeah, I did right. too. The raid two is incredible too. I, how is this show gone on FX? That seems like it's up your wheelhouse. I have not yeah. watched it yet, but it's in our queue. We just finished, uh, it's in our queue. let me talk. Queue. Let me talk. We have a queue. Cassie <laughs> works for the company. She knows how to queue things up and then it's all right there. Super oh, tell easy. her we're loving only murders in the building. Oh, it's great. That show's fucking amazing. And Steve Martin just had a documentary drop on uh, 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 Apple TV yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. You made the what thing the show. Fuck? Does it when you make it fucking? <laughs> it's just you, too. It's not the rest of us. Holy it's got to be something in your settings on your Zoom where you make motions and then things appear. But Yeah, uh, for those of you just listening, every time I make a thumbs up, an actual little thumbs up pops up. But we Dude, just I wonder finished, if I get a hard uh, on for a little boner. We'll just we just finished Masters of the Air, so that was pretty good. On I love that. I loved it, dude. Yeah, I my, mean, uh, think about that. My think grandpa about... was a ball turret gunner in the three ninetieth. Yeah, he was. He was not in the hundredth where they cover, but he was like the group that would tail with them and fight. But fortunately, he went over a little later in the war, so he didn't have the brutal missions that they had when they were getting their asses handed to them before the P-51s and all that stuff. Um, Do you want to know how how difficult it would be to win a war like that now? Because I am in the generation now of still probably, not even, I could, we, they, we wouldn't be drafted to fight, but we would still try to go fight, obviously. But we're the toughest of the crew, probably. And if I was in that, and I was, you train me how to fly a plane, and I was flying, and all of a sudden going, I'm like, all right, here we go. Turn and all of a sudden, I just started bombs flying up. Like, just, you have to, like, like, that's just random. Bing, bing. I'm turning around, dude. We're going yeah. back. till we figure out how to get navigate uh, this lily pond of we, fucking We get shit. uneasy just from turbulence. Just flying southwest, and you feel a little bump, and you're like, I want to get off. This is not fun. Oh, no, dude. That's different level. What yeah, I mean, what, I would not want to be the guy in the bottom shooting. I mean, well, granted, was, you don't have to fly the plane. That was my How grandpa. about the guy that has to do math in the middle, the navigator? Yeah. You got to be like, what? I mean, you got to sit there with a compass <laughs> and a fucking pencil. And you got to be like 680 and you're getting jostled around the goddamn You'd be plane. the guy next to him shooting your gun. Why don't you fire a gun, you fucking nerd? Yeah, I mean, literally, that's me, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Just the, the power of your pencil. The Here's some lead. Here's some useful lead, you cunt. Let's go. But no, dude, that's that was great. Masters of the Year, I highly recommend it. I did yeah. watch that. It was very good. I cried. I literally cried. Like at certain par parts, I was crying. I mean, like even oh god, the the just the valor. And then they show the real people at the end. That's my favorite part of any like sort of documentary narrative show where they show like who played who and how how much they looked like them and every one of these guys like did you read the things i was telling tracy oh, yeah. like, every one of these guys either went on to one or all of these things went on to like a ivy league school to start a business and create they all something. went to harvard it was yeah. nuts they were all they geniuses all, yep or they and they all got married with at like 21 years old and celebrated like their 950th wedding anniversary the day before they died. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, or if the, or if one of them, like one of them's wife died like at like 28 years old, and then he had a picture of her and got a, a visitor a gravesite every day for like 78 years till he dropped dead. Like it's not no one's like this dude fucking really he he started to gamble a lot. 
and drink a lot. And then, you know, he he beat women for a, a while till he realized, you know, like, none, none of them went off. They were all just great humans. Yeah. It was insane. I'm like, I don't think there were that. I don't think there's that many great people in the world right now. Never mind, like you could find them all to fly a fucking plane and and do it the right thing to do. It's insane. yeah. Well, that's why we have drones now. No one has to fly anymore. That's true. That's true. And the drones don't think, and no. they don't. Yeah, they don't come back with one leg. They just don't. I come mean, back. you can't see what my hands are doing. I could be flying a drone right now. Brendan, Steve, do you really think that the na- that the government would let you? With your vast knowledge of uh the government lets me do a lot nothing. of things that you probably aren't too happy about. Maybe people are wondering how you like they go, has he won a million dollars since then? I go, I don't think so. Go, I came close. I want I, I want two hundred K. What do you want from me? I was point I told four him off. That. Jamar Chase had a pass hit him in the head. It literally hit him in the helmet. Otherwise, I win a million bucks again. You paying taxes on this stuff because my I mom am. got whacked. She got yeah, she yeah, won ten thousand yeah, yeah. dollars on a lottery. No, I'm I'm. It sucks. All right. Yeah, you should. Uh, speaking <laughs> of uh, uh, important days, yesterday was opening day for Major League Baseball. Yes, it was. What a day! Well, actually, it wasn't. It, it should have been. Well, it yeah, felt like it. Technically, you know it wasn't. About. The Dodgers are already that. three games deep. It's so stupid. So uh, I did uh, get a chance. I watched the Yankee game, and what a game that was. What a way to start off the season. Third inning, Jonah's like, I knew it. We're going to suck. He's like, we're going to go 12 and 18 our first 30 games. We'll barely be in the bottom of the AL East. I'm like, it's the bottom of the second. Can we fucking? Of the first game of 162. I mean, I <laughs> I've whittled this kid into a New York sports fan don't like you can't let imagine him, you keep him away from gambling because people that like shift that hard from just a couple of uh innings it's yeah. they're the worst they're the worst gamblers to be around do not let him no gamble. he can't have it no he's all over the place uh but it was awesome i mean that's here's a here's a juan soto and anthony volpe two guys in our starting lineup together saw 50 pitches 50 Pretty good. 50 pitches to those two guys. That is an at bat. Those are some yeah. at bats right there. Somewhere Billy Bean when is You can hard. put together, oh, that's great. You can make the other team throw 179 pitches for a baseball game. You're going to end up catching up. So it was awesome. And then Juan Soto throwing out the guy in the ninth inning was fucking sick. Uh, but the game of the night, to my, I don't know if you got a chance. I stayed up to watch the, I was going back and forth between the NCAA games. And I watched the Houston, I mean, the uh, the Rangers and the Cubs. And that game was awesome. It was a tied game in the ninth inning. Top of the ninth, man on second. I think there were two outs. Yeah, I believe there were two outs. One or two outs. But uh, there was a, it was two strikes to the hitter. And he swung and it was a, the, it was a slightest little foul tip, but the umpire didn't see it. It deflected off of Jonah Himes' leg. It went towards the dugout, and he continued to ask for a new ball, and the umpire told him that's not a foul ball, and he kept saying it was foul. The runner basically came around third and scored. By the time he got the ball, stopped arguing, got the ball, and threw it in, the runner circled third and scored. So when you look at the replay, it was a – a slightest little tip, but the umpire obviously didn't see it. He did, you could see it, did tell him that I, that was not a tip. So he, he did have time. He continued to argue after that. So Jonah Heim kind of felt bad when he went back and watched it. He knew he was he was right, but then he should have got the ball. But uh, then in the bottom of the 10th inning, because they went to extra innings, the Cubs didn't score in the top. That bot- Although oh, the bottom of the ninth, they came back to the uh, Astros. Pinch hitter tied the game up. 3-3, bailed him out. Then we go to extras. Cubs don't score. Bottom of the 10, Jonah Hunt comes up with the bases loaded, base hit. Redeems himself. Rangers win. Um, they also called up a rookie, Wyatt Langford, who was playing for Florida last year. Got drafted in the draft and then gets called up. Uh, 
Yeah, I think he at least I think he played eight, six minor league games. And that was it. They're like boom. And he went one for three or something like that. So it was awesome. Uh great fun opening day. I know the uh the Dodgers won big. There was a I think uh who beat Pirates Marlins won twelve innings. Pirates Marlins. who won the game? Uh Pirates. It's five. Pirates won the game. I know the uh, the Tigers beat the Twins, I believe. Mm -hmm. very oh, no, no, Tigers game. beat the White Sox. White the Sox. White Sox, okay. Yep. Um, Still couldn't so, score. Yeah, the, the Mets got rained out, but I think they're playing now, or they're going to start in a little bit. They're starting at uh, – they're less than an hour. One o'clock-ish our time, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it rained all day here yesterday. Uh, I'm going to a week from today's opening day at Yankee Stadium, so I'm going to that with Jonah. Um, nice. and it'll be fun. We already looked at they sent out an email of the new items, food items that they have available and the different and where they're they oh, finally opened to Mr. Softy. What's Mr. Softy? It's it's ice basically cream. it's ice well, it's ice cream, but it's okay. like soft serve ice cream. They have ice cream at Yankee Stadium, but they had like Yankee ice cream store where they make these decadent floats and shakes and sundaes and stuff. What's the problem with that? Well, number one, it takes about an hour and a half to make all these fucking things. And number two, ice cream melts real fucking fast. So, you know, it's a problem when people are standing in line forever trying to get their ice cream. Nobody wants to miss anything. So now they got like a Mr. Softy. Boom. Here's a scoop. You know. Fucking vanilla chocolate swirl. Boom. Just get those. They're like 10 seconds to get out. So they're all over the stadium now. Very happy about that. And they got a meatball parmesan on a cheesy garlic bread that we're very interested in. That's a brand new item. So like a true. Fa but again, I'm still trying to lose weight. I'm still, um, you know, but that's a, like a special day for me. Right. Can I have a special day? You can have a special day. If you really want to lose weight, just change it to turkey parmesan. But oh, yeah. Brandon. Turkey parmesan. Disgusting. It's a delicacy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else? You guys watched the uh the old madness? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I watched a game yesterday. Um I gotta the, the fucking I gotta fix my TV, fucking Samsung. Right before, I, got, I mean, I had to do it before the football season for sure, but I got one of those little dark lines going down a part of the TV. Ooh. So you can still what? watch. It's not like the, the screen is blacked out, but there's just this vertical line that just started. And I called up Samsung and they came out. And, you know, the TV's like four years old now, which is to them ancient and should have been destroyed two years ago. So it's not in warranty. And the guy comes out, I pay him $140 for him to turn it on and go, yeah, you should probably just get a new TV. Oh my God, dude! Look, man, the, gave, the parts one hundred and forty dollars. It costs one hundred and forty dollars to get somebody to come out to look at the TV and do a diagnostics. And his diagnostic was the part for this thing is going to cost you yeah. like two grand. So you might as well just get a new TV. That'll be one hundred and forty dollars. They always fuck you. The yeah. part or the processor or the compressor is always. 42% of the price of a brand new fucking thing. So you're like, why am I going to pay almost half of what a new one would be when this thing could crap out again? You know, it's just fuckable. Yeah. And you're like, but some people are like, just give me the part. Yeah. I mean, I'm, what are you going to not, not have a TV? You I'm think not. this this idiot's going to well, fucking know how it to works. fix it, right? Okay, it works. It's just, it's annoying because there's a little darkened part on the TV. So you can still watch everything fine, but it's that would annoying. would drive me nuts. I know. I'm going to get, I'm going to replace it. Obviously, there's other things I had to, we had to build a baby room. So I got to do that stuff first before, otherwise my wife's going to be like, what are you doing? We don't need, worry about the fucking TV. Yeah, well, you're going to really, I mean, if you're going to put your monitor and put it on your TV, you're going to have a dark spot where you're not going to know what's happening in the in the baby room. Exactly. Tell her it's a safety hazard. Yeah. And also, we probably should upgrade to the 90 inch. What do you have right now? It's 82. Yeah. I mean, you have brand new 82, you can get for like a thousand bucks. Exactly. So, like, it did make sense to, but I'm still pissed that the guy was in my house for literally less than three minutes. And it cost me 140 bucks. 
Who's he? Geek Squad? No, Samsung. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. I would have held it. I would have been like, no, nah, we got to do something out. You got to like run an errand for me. <laughs> <laughs> we got to like yeah. hang or something. Like, do, do the dishes, enough? dude. Like, I'm having a little money. problem with my Wi Fi. He's looking at like something else has to happen here yeah. electronically or, or service wise. Other than like, no. Well, the world is different when you're bigger than people and you can intimidate them. Oh, dude. I feel bad. Yeah, it is. I feel bad for him. <laughs> he doesn't know. You could be a trained killer, dude. You never know yeah. he's a fucking killer but anymore. I had to end everything with please, sir. <laughs> please, sir. Like you're a fucking Dickens character. Please, sir. Fix my television. <laughs> I don't want the I don't want the dark screen. Nope, can't do it. Oh, please, sir, don't fuck my wife, please, <laughs> Brenton. My God. Um, he, uh, uh, talking tournament. Have you guys watched the women's at all? No. I have to say, I have not. No, and it's okay. not not that it isn't entertaining. It's just sexist. Have, well, yeah. I'm not sure I'm not Charles Barkley enthusiastic about the women's tournament, but I'll definitely watch when it gets down to the final four. Have you seen Caitlin Clark's offer from Ice Cube? What is it? Two it's million five, to play in the big three. Five million. Ooh. And she can still million. play in the WNBA. So it wouldn't affect that. It's just he's trying to like stop her and other players from going overseas. Yeah, so why they wouldn't just, they? Yeah. I don't think she'll take it though. I don't know, dude. You know, a, you know Della Della. Uh, what's her name? Della Davana. I don't know. I saw real sports on her. She's a real good women's NBA WNBA player, and she doesn't go overseas because she has a sister with uh, highly special needs or whatever. So she wants to be same. around. So she, she turned down a lot of money to go overseas and stuff. And she's like one MVPs. So it would be cool to have an option of being like, I don't want to go play in Russia and get locked up for a fucking vape pen or any like, you know, or to be able to make money. I, you know, they should do a big three team of like Caitlin Cook and her and like a couple, you know, maybe like a, a, a dude or even not a dude. And just, you know, when you're playing three on three, it's really, I mean, Physically, it's like, yeah, boxing out and stuff like that. But, like, it's not that – like, it's not like you're running up and down and you're, like, you know, like – I feel like three good, really good women's players could really stay with three old w, uh, with old NBA players. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Caitlin is in her prime. Like, she could dribble around. I don't know who's in that. Gary Payton? Is he in it? Like, senior? Like – I'm not saying, she, but she could, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be like, oh, shit, this is, you know, they're never going to be able to compete. They would be able to compete, and it would be cool. I think I'm for it, but, I mean, I don't know. What, is she not doing it or not considering it? I don't know. I was just reading that she probably won't take up the offer. I think she'll make enough in endorsements and whatnot. But I think she should. Why not? If, you, if you're getting paid that much to just play, I don't know, they play like 10 games. It's insane how little they play. Yeah. I think it would be fun. You're pretty much going up against like old NBA players that not even like the Hall of Famers, guys like Tony Allen. I mean, I think she could actually look really good. That's what I'm saying. They should do it. They yeah. should consider it at least. Um, but at the same time, you know you're going to make a lot of money and be the face of the WNBA if you were to either get injured playing in that or if you were to get embarrassed by somebody, that could really affect your your career in the WNBA and your reputation. Her reputation right now is she's the best women basketball player of all time. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think I would do it. I would just – I don't need to do the gimmick. I want, to be, I want to be Tom Brady. I'm not going to go play in the XFL just because they're going to pay me a bunch of money. You're already rich, Brenton. I know, but also I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I mean, again, I I know she, I would want to compete and be the best at what I could do, but I would not. It's she's, not like she's, she's already making crazy money because of yeah. uh, college. She's making like, I think she's worth like 3.1 million. I, yeah, I read. so she doesn't need the money. She's going to yeah. want to focus on being the best WNBA player of all time. 
So she should I, focus on having babies and cleaning up the kitchen. Don't do that. It's a new okay. world, Steve. Okay. She can do she both. Focused on making sure a man is happy. <laughs> what is what is going on here? Discussing women out in the big three. Give me a break here, Brent. Uh, I have not watched any of these games, and not because I believe that women's places in the kitchen, but mostly because they can't dunk. No, I did. I, they, uh, no, I don't want, I don't so have time. I let, <laughs> yeah, it's a while, yeah. No, they, uh, it was between opening day and now, like, you know, we got sports going on on our own and stuff, baseball and everything like that. I didn't have any. I'll get, I'll get some tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I will, between the next couple days, Easter, I'm sure there'll be a part of the day where I don't want to talk to my family anymore. And, I'll watch the most competitive thing that's on. And if it's the women's game, let's have it. Have at it. Um, I would like to see, is UConn still in it in the women's tournament? I think so. Because I don't think anyone's beaten UConn in the men's tournament. So I would like to see uh, uh, both of them win. So I don't know if that's possible, but that'd be cool. Yeah, UConn's playing Duke in women's. Oh, okay. Who's favored? Ooh. UConn Give me ten grand on UConn. Um, this favored. I think UConn is. Yeah, UConn by eight and a half. Oh, all right. Uh, Gino Oriyama, coach of UConn. Uh, yeah, no, I think um, I would like to see. You know, I don't. Have you watched the men's tournament? I mean, UConn looks. They look pretty unstoppable. They, they ran through their last. I think it's now nine. NCAA games, yeah. the closest. They the closest. Were, they were trailing like for like a millisecond to San Diego State, and then they just kind of took over. They're they're going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, yeah, because they beat the good teams soundly, and they beat the bad teams very, very soundly. So they look uh, they look very, very fit. Now again, injuries, whatever things can happen, but they look like they. I mean, I didn't realize the first time you could have a possible repeat champion in since Florida and, and the Joachim Noah. Remember the Joachim Noah? Was it? Yeah. Wait. Yeah. You take me back to my childhood. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Yeah, but yo, because the father Al, is Al, new. Yeah, you got it right. Joachim Noah, Al Horford is on that team. Yeah, but who, who's Joachim Noah's father? He's a tennis player. Tennis player, but like that. Oh, I thought I I called him the tennis player's name. No, Yannick no, you got Noah. It. Yes, Yannick Noah, and Joachim is the son. It was him. Who else was on that team? Al Horford. Al Horford. Who's still? He's still playing in the NBA, right? I think he is. I he think is. he's on the Celtics. Yes, that's insane. That when you see NBA players that like like your age. Then you're like, I'm not that old. I know, but none of them. I mean, there's no one that. I mean, he's no. young. He's Once Vince than, Carter he's retired. Than LeBron. He's, he's Who? Only, Al Horford. Al Horford. He's only I, 37. I think, I actually, I, he's only 37. Oh, he really? Yeah, he's not, Damn. he's not ancient. Damn. Well, he seems old to me. Well, yeah, because I mean, he's been front and center for so long. But LeBron, he's yeah, got two maybe. years on him. Yeah, well, LeBron, do you see that he was being guarded last night by a guy who was two months younger than Bronny James? <laughs> it was the youngest, wow. like, opponent he'd ever gone up against. Really? Yeah. And he smoked him. I assume he did all right, yeah. I mean, it's, right. Some, it's impressive how he still puts up triple doubles almost every game at 39. It is pretty – it's insane. That's the thing that – the argument we talked about of, like, you know, the greatest of all time. It's the fact that his longevity is – be and His the, longevity you know, puts him in the conversation regardless of what you think of Jordan and him and side-by-side -side comparing things. Like, just the fact that he's 39. And we saw Jordan fall off a cliff with Washington. Yeah, and it also felt like Jordan looked old. I yeah. still – like, maybe it's because I, I'm like, oh, if LeBron can't do it, then I can't do it anymore. 
<laughs> you know, so I'm like, and I'm not willing to admit it, and neither is he. So I'm glad about that. So I'm like, oh, so it doesn't look like he can't do it because maybe I, you know, in my mind, we're equals. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So once he admits he can't do it, then I can't do it anymore. Well, bureaus are seven. But I'm years still putting up PRs. <laughs> I'm still popping PRs left and right, bro. So don't don't test me. I can still lift the bar. I'm doing fine. You'll see, dude. You're gonna have to. Now you're gonna have two women soon in that house to protect, right? You better get that bar up. And you're gonna see some Brenton PRs coming in because I don't want to hear any more. Yes, please. Yes, please, sir. Please, you're gonna have to be the man of the house, Brett. I, I let a man into my house who was twice my size. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Well, that don't let anyone in your house. It's bigger than I want you to anymore. fix the TV. <clears throat> you should have just opened up the ring cam, put on your television, and had him done it from there. And that way, you probably would have charged you 125 bucks. You could have done yeah. it via fucking, you know, yeah. the way we do this goddamn thing. Well, I, I then I need a, I need a new washer dryer. If you can come out and help me carry those down the second, I'm not going to fucking carry a washer. Whirlpools, dryer Kenmore's, doors. you can't go wrong with those guys. I got a whirlpool. You can't. It's making like a noise. I don't like it. My ice machine's fucked. We're having 25 people over for Easter. I'm smoking a ham. It's going to be great, but I now I got to go fucking figure out what's wrong with my ice machine. I got to call Wolf. Hello, Wolf. What's why is my ice machine not working? Wait, Wolf who? Wolf Blitzer? Yeah, Jimmy Wolf. <laughs> Jimmy Wolf. Fucking Wolf. I gotta call Mr. Wolf. Have him come over and fucking clean up dead bodies and get my ice machine working. Um anything else, boys? We're all over the place today. I, mean, I love it. P, P, so is P Diddy. I don't know. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Can you explain what's going on to me? Because I don't, I'm not following. And I really here's what I know. Feel bad. I, I here's what I get know. him to the Greek, and now you can't watch that movie anymore because everyone's canceled. I loved Made. You ever made? That's a that's an old movie. Do you remember the movie Made with John Favreau and Vince Vaughn and P. Diddy? No. Yeah, dude. Go back and watch. You want to talk about old movies? How's it? I'll drop some knowledge on you. That's not a foreign movie. It's an American made movie. I think John Favreau probably even directed it. It's called Made. Go check it out. Anyway, here's what I know. He's getting raided. His house has got raided, turned upside down. They're looking for basically anything they can get hands on for child trafficking, human trafficking, which I thought, I didn't know what that was. I thought it was like, I thought it was just like you're you're bringing slaves over, but it's I guess it's like sex trafficking and stuff like that, like bringing over like people that just kidnapping people and then putting them into sex trafficking. Uh, and so yeah, and he's been arrested for that, but or he has not been arrested. He's been accused of that. They raided his house, but last night he took his daughters to Top Golf in Miami. So he's out and about. He's free. He's allowed to do what he wants to do. He can go where he wants. I'm sure the Top Golf people weren't psyched that fucking, you know, <laughs> he did. He usually goes to like clubs, I'm sure, and restaurants and things like that. And now that he's under indictment for human trafficking, he's going to take his daughters to Top Golf. They're probably yeah. like, great, free publicity. We'll reserve you a bay. Um, but, but yeah, so he was at Top Golf last night, uh, making sure his, his game is still tight for hopefully not a prison sentence. I have no idea. Now all of a sudden you see every video you see, I, I'm getting on Instagram is like P Diddy and Justin Bieber built a treehouse together and they fucked each other in it. I was like, what? Why is this coming out now? Uh, I, did you see his drug meal? What? He his, his drug meal was arrested. I think it was yesterday. Who was he's twenty five Why does he have a old. drug mule? Well, he's you a wanna, white ginger wanna, kid. Who, yeah, you want to transport your drugs and you don't want to take them. You don't want to get caught with them. Yeah. What drugs played, does Diddy do? He's found with a bunch of coke, oh, like yesterday, God. and the kid played like D one at Syracuse. He's only twenty five. Comes for basketball, and he comes from a rich family. It's like where is Diddy finding these rich white kids to like, to, you know, be his mules? And I get, and I was reading that a lot of these, a lot of these people will hire like guys that look like me and you to be drug mules because. No one's going to ask us questions. Dude, well, it's about it's funny time you say that. Work. Funny Damn you right. say that. 
I just opened up a new business. We're called uh, 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 Cool Mules. We uh, we're cool dads that are drug mules for hire. Just me and a couple friends here, and we'll mule your shit wherever you got to go. We'll do it, no problem. In our in our pickup trucks and our RVs and stuff, we'll mule it wherever the fuck you got to take it to. I mean, it's insane that. Why does Diddy need a, like how much coke is the guy doing, or is he like selling it? Is it for selling he's purposes? Sell, oh, it's for yeah, sure he's probably for hosting oh some God. cocaine parties and uh, bringing in his sex trafficking and it's a whole. He's he's probably got an island. I thought he had a vodka. He has that too. Like what? He's, Can't you just buy the He's well diversified, the Steve. He's got a lot of revenue streams. It's all different industries. Sean John. I don't even think Diddy ever sold drugs. Biggie sold drugs. Jay-Z sold. Diddy was like a party starter, like a fucking guy. Why is he now in the drug thing? No one ever shot at Diddy. No one ever tried to kill Diddy. I think you're focused on the wrong thing. Drugs, okay, fine, sure. He's literally human sex trafficking. That's what we should be talking about. You're so he's about Black him. Epstein, is what you're telling me. Basically, yeah. that's what it seems like. Holy shit. So he's about to become very suicidal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then Every breath you take. They're, they're tying Jay-Z to that. him, and 50 Cent is uh, oh, calling out Jay-Z oh, for being no. a part of that. What Jay Z posted like a the, or not Jay Z but sex 50, trafficking 50 Cent posted a, a missing milk carton with Jay Z's face on it, like right after Diddy got uh, taken down. Oh no, by the way, 50 Cent's trolling is top notch, he might be the best troll on the internet going. I mean, he, between yeah, yeah, the Floyd Mayweather one was the greatest I've ever heard in my life. I'll donate a million dollars if you can read what was it, a Harry Potter book or something yeah, like that? A, a, a page. He initially asked for the book, and then he said, "Just read a page." Yeah. Now, he's also probably on Ozempic now, and I'm sure he's taking a lot of shots for that because he was super fat at the uh, the Super Bowl. At the Super Bowl, so now he's. I heard he's back to normal weight, and everyone thinks he's on Ozempic, but that's a great. You know, is he being in, in implicated in the fact that he's part of the getting the the sex workers? Who oh, Jay Z? No, or... Fifty Cent. No, Fifty. No, Fifty Cent's baby. One of his baby mamas was uh, was one of the Diddy sex workers, and so he taps in a post yesterday that like of him with a cigar in his mouth, like I didn't know he was a Wait sex a worker. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm confused here. You should. Diddy, one of Diddy's sex workers had a baby yes. with 50 Cent. Yes. Okay. Now, when she had this baby with 50 Cent, was she already part of Diddy's sex? Like, when she met 50 Cent, was she like, oh, and he was like, well, what do you do for a living? I'm obviously 50 Cent. She's like, oh, I'm part of Diddy's sex group. And no, he I don't was think like, that's what? That. Yeah, I think that was after. Yeah, I think she left him to go be a part of Diddy's sex group. Well, then that's not a sex group, dude. That's not trafficking. That's giving someone a job. Yeah, I think uh, there it's more problematic. <laughs> that's important than just one person. I think of trafficking. I think of like people on a cargo crate. Like being shipped from another country here, yeah. like, and then they hit a fucking bridge in in you know Baltimore, and get toppled into the water. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I think of human trafficking. Not like that hey, that girl's hot and she used to fuck my friend. Maybe she'll fuck me and my friends as well. I don't know what the gig is, but it doesn't seem fun. But it seemed like. She was kind of understanding of the ways of the. I don't understand like how she got trafficked after that. I don't understand. I guess maybe I don't understand I don't, traffic. I think you're focusing on one person when it's it could be potentially a whole operation, and she's just whole someone, operation. Someone who wanted to be a part of it but isn't uh, forced into it. I'm sure Ep sex trafficking. I'm sure Epstein terrible, had volunteers too. I mean, it's they're not all, but you know, 
you got to get them young and you got to get them fresh. And so that's when you drug and you, you bring in and well, the whole thing, I think that we can end on that. Brenton's obvious advice to everyone. You got to get them young and you got to get them fresh. <laughs> so to quote the great Brenton Biddlecomb, got to get them young, got to get them fresh. <laughs> and we'll have uh t-shirts for sale that say yep. just that uh, young and fresh. Steve ran is easy.com young and fresh. That's, <laughs> All right. I didn't realize that. It, I thought he was like, just like he was caught, like, uh, I don't know, doing like drugs or something like that. Or no, I didn't well, realize like sex trafficking. Meant, it's like, been, in, it's been of... investigated. So let's wait and let them gather a little bit. But it what seems... are you part of his legal operation now? Or just, let's just, wait and gather. Look, man, information. Let's fucking just make assumptions. Let, let it, let, no, stop. Why can't we just that? make uneducated assumptions and have fun with that? <laughs> <laughs> Due process, but he's probably guilty. No, yeah, Homeland Security. They, I think he's they fine. Don't, they don't raid I don't think he spends a day in jail. I think I and you know, let me tell you something. Can I just ask you if you do if you do get a, a search warrant for your house, right? And they do come and they execute it and they they find whatever they find. You get brought in for trial and there's nothing. You get do they do they pay for you to put your cleaning like your ship back together? No. No. Like th his house was pretty tore the fuck up. That seems pretty shitty. Right? Like yeah. what do you want? And you got to be a like, you got to be okay. a special kind of asshole to love that job to go in. I'm just going to go in and break shit because there's no ramifications. She said to make uh, sure there were no secret notes in that that priceless boss. It would be yeah. funny though if the feds had a cleaning guy. Yeah, guy that has to come in, a Mr. Wolf. How about that? That's the Mr. Wolf I call. The guy that comes in and cleans up after the FBI rips through all your shit. It's got to, you know, when you when you have a set, when you have like a when you hire your rent your house out to like a uh, a film crew, they come in, they make it when they leave, it has to look exactly the way it looked before you left. These guys just fucking rip through everything. They go, like, oh, what if they don't find anything? Then it's a whoops, sorry. That'll be $140. You know what's funny? They should do that. I'm sure there's a YouTube video of people who get their houses search warranted that it's the wrong house. Wrong house search warrants executed. <laughs> it has to be. I'm sure it's great. People just walk into their house and all of a sudden they're like, what the fuck? Um, I don't know. I've run out of steam. I think I have to take a shit too again. This is like my shitting time, guys. <laughs> you guys are like my laxative, so so I don't have to shit in front of you again. Why don't we just end it now? Uh, can I ask <clears throat> one more question? Because I'm just curious. Wh whose jersey is that? Why are you holding here? your nose like I just shit in the room? Because <laughs> I, I updated my Zoom and I can smell you. Uh, whose jersey is that above your right shoulder? Oh. This jersey is none other than my jersey from that. the league. Oh, okay. It's my Kevin MacArthur Bears jersey that I wore on whenever yeah, we... Yeah, because I, I just saw the two and I was like, are you a big DJ Moore fan all of a sudden? No. Nope. The, the color scheme looked interesting. It's uh, the jersey that they, and they framed and gave it to me. And it probably smells terrible because I don't think they ever washed it. And I would wear it like <laughs> usually once or twice a season. And they would pull it out of a crate from a warehouse in Van Nuys, dust it off and then throw it on my back and throw it back into the crate every year. Hell yeah. So now it's framed right there. Uh, all right, beautiful. We all learned something. Brenton likes some fresh and young. Uh, that's my football jersey from the league. And, uh, you know, Lucas, what did we learn about you, Lucas? You can outlive us um, I, I I love women's basketball. I, I'm you do. honestly enjoying it more than the men's right now. And I don't care what that makes me. If I'm going to keep watching. If Caitlin Clark played for a different Big Ten school, would you be as excited? Oh, yeah, that's no. true. No, we can get our first title since 56. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you're and excited Caitlin because Clark, it's your school. It's Iowa. Yeah, played for Michigan. Get it? I don't think we'd have as much excitement <laughs> rolling through our veins as no. you do. <laughs> like, yeah, that's why I'm like, if St. John's was in the final uh, Elite Eight, I'd be like, Guys, this is the biggest thing that's ever happened, but we got fucking host. Hey, man, Oakland um, made it to the round of 32. Uh, Yeah, they did. And 
now I think one of the Oakland guys. They're a fucking commuter school. You understand that? It's not even a real campus. <laughs> it's a commuter it's school. We made it to the round of 32. That's sick. Congratulations, Brenton. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I had Arizona winning the whole thing, so I'm I'm done. The one yeah. I, the bracket I filled out is over. So, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, all right, that's it. We're done. That's all we got. And I think we're gonna take it next week off because someone's going away. So we we'll see you when we see you next I got, time. I got but... family coming into town, so I'm gonna be occupied. Oh. Until then, uh, I'll you know we'll see you when we see you, and I'll let you know how opening day was. But until then, we uh, we love you guys. Talk to you later. Go Bills. Go Bills. Thank you very much for joining me. For joining me. How you been? How you been? Ladies, and Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back, back, back. Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy.